thank you for everyone who's joined us today. Um, my name is Simon Clark. I'm the EGU Projects Coordination Officer. And today I'll be bringing or hosting the webinar on what can EGU do for you, funding, fellowships, and more. Uh, we have uh, four speakers with us here today. We have Helen Glaves, President of the EGU, uh, Chloe Hill, who's the EGU's Policy Manager, Martin Archer, who is the Chair of the um, Outreach Committee, and Jean-Luc Boingier, who is the Chair of the Education Committee. Um, each will be giving a short talk, discussing activities you can get involved in, uh, what opportunities there exist throughout the year outside of the General Assembly, um, and afterwards, we'll follow through with some Q&A. You should be able to ask questions um, in the Q&A box at the bottom um, of the stream, which should be active now. Before I begin, though, there is already a funding deadline this month. We have a deadline on the 15th of September for funding for conferences and training schools. So proposals must be submitted before the 15th of September for funding for up to 5,000 euros. If you're submitting a proposal for a conference, they can be of three types. They can be looking at novel research and innovation in the space sciences, novel research and innovation in biogeochemical sciences, or for geoscience conferences outside of Europe. For training schools, funding is a little bit more um, looser in terms of you can choose the topic of the school um, you want. Um, however, there still are some stipulations. For example, uh, the training school must not be held during the same time as the General Assembly, and the proposal must be submitted by each EU member. If you're interested in applying for funding for these uh, events, um, you can either contact the Topical Events Committee, uh, the email of which is topical, Dash events at egu.eu, or you can look at the call which I'll place in the chat uh, now. Otherwise, I'll stop sharing and hand over to Helen if you'd like to begin. Hi, yes, thanks, Simon. Hi, everybody. It's a, it's a real pleasure actually to be able to introduce uh, um, today's webinar. So, I, I'm going to just say a few short words about EGU as a whole. Um, so those, for those of you who don't know, um, EGU is probably the largest earth and space and planetary science member organization in Europe. And, and we actually pride ourselves in being a bottom-up organization. And that means that many of the key priorities for EGU are actually driven and focused by our members. But I think it's also worth highlighting the fact that while EGU is, is by name, a, a European organization. In fact, our membership is global and it is highly diverse. And in fact, a significant proportion of our members uh, identify as early career scientists because when we think about diversity of our members, we're also thinking about career stage. So we also think a lot about how our activities and what the organization as a whole does to support all of our members. So EGU, as I've said, we exist to serve our members. And we actually rely on a fantastic group of volunteers who give generously of their time as members of the executive, the council and committees. And, and you see some of those people here today. Our volunteers also work with the wonderful EGU office team and our commercial partners at Copernicus to deliver a range of activities which we actually deliver for our members and on behalf of our members as well. EGU has an extensive por portfolio of open access journals as well. And we should also mention the, the newly launched EGU Sphere preprint server, because this also relies on our volunteers, our editors, but also not forgetting the huge number of people who review for the EGU journals every year. But I also want to highlight the fact that we're, our volunteers are very much the heart of the organization in terms of how our events are delivered. Um, Simon in his introduction mentioned the General Assembly in Vienna, 
but we also have things such as the teacher-led gift workshops and the topical events. Um, Simon in his introduction mentioned that um, the, the, the next deadline for funding for our members to be able to access um, support from EGU from topical events, um, correct me if I'm wrong, is the 15th of September, just to emphasize that again. But I don't want to say too much today because today's webinar is about introducing a whole range of member benefits, um, which Chloe, Jean-Luc and Martin will introduce during this webinar. So I'm going to hand over to them to talk about the benefits that EGU can deliver to its members. So thank you, Simon. I'll hand back to you to introduce the first of our speakers. Thank you so much, Helen, for that introduction. Um, I would also say it's the 20th anniversary of EGU's founding this month, and I believe today is the actual anniversary. So it could be a nice little <laughs> celebration, I guess, in the in this, this webinar. Um, so if we move on to our first speaker uh, today, which is Martin Archer, Chair of the Outreach mm -hmm. Committee. If Martin, you'd like to begin. Yeah, thank you, Simon, and thank you to Helen, and uh, thank you to everyone who's joining this webinar. So yes, my name is Martin Archer. Um, my main job is as a space scientist. I'm based at Imperial College in London, but uh, I am, as a voluntary role, I have taken on the chair position of the Outreach Committee for EGU, and I've been involved with this committee for um, coming on, I think, about five years now. And um, the committee itself is, is made up of lots of different volunteers. I'm going to give you a bit of a flavor of some of the, the benefits and opportunities that are available for you to interact with that committee uh, and do, do more uh, outreach work and, and further your, your practice in, in the sorts of areas that the committee covers. Objectives listed on the EGU website for what the purpose of outreach at EGU is about. Um, so obviously we want to increase public awareness of the scientific work that the EGU membership does, uh, particularly beyond geoscience communities. So we're talking about outside of academia in its many shapes and forms. We also want to high, identify and highlight all of the different societal challenges uh, that can be addressed by the EGU membership, particularly in a very prescient with uh, its, the geosciences harnessing the expertise of our members to, to try and address those needs. Uh, and then coupled with a few of the other um, parts of EGU, we at the Outreach Committee try to establish and strengthen links between the EGU membership and policy and decision makers um, with a bit of a Europe focus, and that will be done in hand with the Science for Policy Working Group, which Chloe's going to talk to you about. And then also we have some level of um, interaction over the sort of way that EGU communicates through things like newsletters, websites, blogs, and social media, which is largely handled by the EGU office, um, but uh, within the purview of the outreach committee. Um, so yeah, we have a number of opportunities for people to actually engage. Um, so for instance, since 2018, we established the EGU public lecture in Vienna, uh, and um, that's currently done in collaboration with the Austrian Academy of Sciences, and we rotate the topics each year. So we reach out to our membership um, to uh, ask, ask people to, to speak for this. So that could be something that we may do ask you to do in the future. Um, we also have a number of outreach activities that we would do during the week of the GA. Um, this first started out to, um, by going to the Vienna International School and um, giving activities to the school children there. And we have aspirations in the future that were somewhat stalled by the pandemic to actually have um, schools from Vienna and the surrounding areas come to the Austria Center in Vienna and interact with uh, EGU's General Assembly itself. So that's something I'm hopefully we can see in General Assemblies in, in years to come. Outside of the General Assembly itself, though, we have other opportunities. For instance, uh, we've established these Geoscience Days. These are national public engagement events with a particular focus to, to do these in underrepresented countries um, across EGU's member states. Uh, we've had one of those that was done in Romania. We have another one due to happen by the end of the year um, in Finland. And we'll be, this is an initiative that the Outreach Committee will be continuing. And then a more recent uh, initiative is these teacher scientist pa uh, pairing schemes where we're co-creating lessons and activities uh, 
for schools uh, by pairing teachers with active scientists. And this uh, picture on the bottom right shows you how that could be done in, in practice. The, the lesson may be delivered by the teacher in the class and the scientist uh, over something like Zoom, but the, the whole process of coming up with that, that lesson and all the uh, adjacent materials is, is really a co-creation activity between both that teacher and that scientist. We also have a, a funding opportunity for geoscientists and their collaborators to, uh, to enable them to do public engagement products of their own. Um, and we particularly support innovative and effective public engagement projects that target underserved public audiences. And that scheme is open annually uh, with grants of up to 1,500 euros. And we've had a really varied amount of projects that you can find out more about on our website. There's, these pictures kind of illustrate some of that breadth that, that we've seen through that scheme. As of this year, we've instigated free online training courses. Um, these are really in-depth online workshops um, from experienced professional trainers that are external to EGU that we offer up to early career members. And they can be on a broad range of topics within the scope of science communication, engagement, policy, and a whole host of others. We ran one earlier on um, writing for, uh, for non-technical audiences. And uh, we will have another one in November which is more on public engagement and the applications for that will be opening very soon on the EGU website. So please do keep checking that for more information. And uh, the final thing I wanna highlight is that at the General Assembly, there are union-wide sessions on education and outreach. Um, and these are coordinated by the outreach committee, but obviously um, they are proposed by our members and they are fantastic sessions for the members of EGU to share their practice in all of these different spheres from science communication, engagement and outreach to higher education, teaching and research, um, EDI issues and geoethics and open science. Uh, so don't forget that the session proposal for EGU General Assembly 2023 is on the 19th of September. Uh, and you can, of course, propose uh, one of these education and outreach sessions as well. So that was a bit of a whistle stop tour of everything. Well, not everything, a number of things that the outreach committee is involved with. You can find out far more information on EGU's website. Um, and this is the part of the menu structure that you want to be looking at. Uh, and I'm happy to take questions near the end of this webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Martin, for that introduction into the Outreach Committee's activities. Um, to move quickly on, uh, next we have Chloe Hill, who's going to discuss science for policy. Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight in. Um, I'm going to try and give a relatively brief overview of the EGU's policy programme, um, primarily focusing on some of the opportunities that exist at the moment that you can apply for and that you can engage with um, as, as members of the EGU. So for those of you who aren't aware of the EGU's policy program, it was it is quite a new, um, relatively new program. It was first established in 2016. Um, and since then it has grown quite substantially. So we now run a couple of different activities and initiatives. Um, initially, the program was established to empower EGU members to become more actively engaged in the policy process, to give them the resources and the tools um, they need to communicate better and more effectively with policymakers and to understand what institutionalized processes exist primarily within Europe so that they can do that. Um, so it was more focused on that area um, as well as providing opportunities for EGU members to engage and connect with policymakers, creating these spaces for two-way dialogues, things like events, pairing schemes, um, which I am gonna get into in the following slides that enable individual members to meet policymakers, create those connections, network with them, and then provide them with expertise and information from a scientific perspective. Um, now, EGU very much supports evidence-informed policymaking, which is where this comes from. Um, and so the third, uh, the third aim that we have, the overarching aim, is to provide information um, and scientific evidence to policymakers when and where they need it. Now, this is quite a challenging process and it's one that EGU has started engaging with more recently, um, but it would also, not only are we doing this on an organisational level, but we're also trying to support our members in doing this within their own organisations as well um, and providing them the space to actually do that themselves. So through things like the Biodiversity Task Force, which I'm going to talk about in a few slides time. 
Um, and the fourth thing that we do, and this is actually rather indirectly, is that we support policy for science. And these, this refers to any policies um, that relate to research funding, research conditions, open access, all of these sorts of things. Um, things that EGU supports, but because um, we're still growing our, our policy program at this stage, we might, may mainly um, support them through other European organisations by working with them um, and making statements and that sort of thing. So these are sort of the main uh, goals that we have. And now I'm going to get into exactly how EGU goes about achieving those things and, and how you can engage with them. So the first thing I want to highlight is something that is happening at the moment. Um, and this is the EGU Science and Policy Pairing Scheme. Um, this is something that we first started in 2019. And in 2019, it was really successful. We had it in person. Um, we had Solmaz, who was actually now part of the outreach committee. Um, she was the selected scientist and she went to Brussels and she worked with an MEP for a week in person. Um, and she got to experience what life is like in the European Parliament. Um, and she had a really fantastic experience with that. If you do want to read more about her experience, she actually published a blog post on it, which I can share either in the chat or if you're watching this on YouTube, I can put it into the description as well. Um, but obviously in 2020, things changed a little bit. Um, so the policy pairing scheme in 2020 did go online and we found that was a little bit more challenging and so this year, we're very happy to be able to get back to doing it in person. So the application process um, for this pairing scheme is currently open. And this year's MEP is Norbert Linz. So Norbert Lin Linz, as a member of the European Parliament, was selected and invited to um, participate in our pairing scheme because he does work on a lot of areas that are very relevant for the geosciences. And he's also very open um, to receiving scientific information and expertise. So if you are interested in going to Brussels to work, for, to work in the parliament with Norbert Linz and his team for a week, um, you can apply until the 12th of November and the application process is quite straightforward. It's a CV or a resume um, along with a motivation letter. So pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and you can apply now online. Again, I will put this link both in the chat and in the YouTube description. Um, but once, once you do that, these applications will be assessed by EGU's Science and Policy Working Group um, and they'll be shortlisted and then Norbert Linz and his team will actually select the final candidate based on their information needs. Um, so this is one way that the EGU really tries to promote um, this two-way dialogue, this interface um, and create these connections between scientists and policymakers. If you have any questions about this program, please feel free to put it into the Q&A box as well. So the next thing I would like to just touch on that I have actually already mentioned in the first slide is the EGU's Biodiversity Task Force. Now this task force is a relatively um, a, a, new, a new thing for the EGU. It was actually created this year. So in January this year, we created the EGU Biodiversity Task Force and biodiversity was selected as the EGU's policy priority area in 2021 by the EGU Council. So this basically means that it, we can focus on a particular area. We now have eight experts, eight EGU members who are experts in a lot of different scientific areas um, who meet on a regular basis and discuss how EGU can provide relevant information and evidence to EU policymakers. Um, so the first time that we engage, the first sort of output that this group has had is to create this response to the EU's nature restoration law. This is a law that is pro proposed by the EU Commission and that will be amended and either accepted or rejected by the European Parliament and Council. So we, we responded, or the EU Biodiversity Task Force responded, um, giving seven different recommendations about how this particular law could be strengthened. Um, and we gave this obviously from a scientific perspective. So one example you can see on the screen here, this was our second recommendation. And this was to actually also include remediation as part of this EU nature restoration law. Obviously remediation is very relevant for the geosciences. So we felt like we were able to comment on it. Um, and remediation was actually planned to be included in this restoration law and it wasn't included in the end. So we wanted to highlight that and see if we could get that put into the biodiversity law by the parliament or by the council when they're doing these amendments. 
So if you do want to actually engage more with this biodiversity task force, we do have an open survey um, trying to get feedback from the EU membership base about the different areas you think that the task force could focus on. Again, I'll put this into the chat. Um, so you can learn more about that. I'll also put the full response to this biodiversity, um, biodiversity law in the chat as well. So you can read through that if you're interested. Um, obviously, the biodiversity task force is just made up of EGU members. It is the first task force that we've had, but I don't think it will be the last. So if you are interested in engaging in a group setting, in learning how to interact with these laws um, or with these processes, this is something you might want to look out for in the future as well. And if you wanted to learn more about this or you want to have more of a discussion, because obviously this is more of a presentation today, less of a discussion, EGU also has um, regular science for policy hangouts. So these are spaces where you can actually, if they're online spaces, where you can meet people who are working on the policy interface or as policymakers themselves, or people, other people who are interested in learning more about science or policy and have discussions about certain issues or topics or challenges that scientists have when they are trying to engage with policy. Um, so on the right-hand side, you can see a little word um, diagram of the different topics that we discussed in the last hangout. Um, these are very informal spaces, so you really can ask whatever questions you have um, and start the discussion around those questions. If you would like to join these hangouts, you can. the next one will be on the 3rd of November at 4.30 European time. Um, I guess it won't be CST, I guess it'll be winter time by then, but it'll be European time. Um, and you can actually already register for this online as well. And actually, if you wanted to talk more about these these two these spaces for two way dialogues um, and the importance of creating these spaces where you can actually interact with policymakers, um, you should join our webinar on Tuesday, the twenty seventh of September, um, at four o'clock. So this is actually part of the EU's twentieth anniversary, and we'll be having this conversation with people who are policymakers. We'll be highlighting the benefits of creating these spaces and how other scientific organisations can go about creating these spaces as well. The final thing I want to highlight is if you want more information about any of these initiatives, upcoming initiatives, non-EGU but policy relevant initiatives, you should sign up for the EGU's Science and Policy Newsletter. You can find this online. Again, I'll also share the link. Um, but basically, this is a, a monthly newsletter that I send out and it will be actually it'll be sent out tomorrow. So if you want to get this month's, make sure you sign up today. Um, and it just highlights what we think are the most relevant policy initiatives in Europe for the month that you might like to engage with as a geoscientist. So that is all from my side. Again, if you have any questions, please put them into the Q&A and I'll pass back over to Simon. Thank you, Clary. Um, just going to move on to our final speaker for today, uh, Jean-Luc, who yes. wants to join us. I am here. So hello, every, hello everyone, I am Jean-Luc Beringuet. So I have a position as chair of education committee for EGU. And uh, I would want to highlight today uh, some action that we uh, propose to our target audiences. So the target uh, public for us is uh, our teacher, mainly teacher uh, in school with strong geoscience background or weak geoscience background, it's according of a, of a country. And we are also interested to support the teacher of uh, universe, university level, what we call a tertiary education. And also we, we try to propose action with researcher in geoscience education. So we have an action plan uh, in short term to propose an action. And I would like to highlight some of this action in the next slide. So uh, usually we have four uh, axes. Uh, so we, you, we focus our action in four axes. The, the blue one, the, the first one is about the gift. So gift means geoscience information for teacher. This is mainly workshop where teachers are selected to participate to this workshop. So I will make some details in the next slide. The second axis very important for us is the tertiary geoscience education. So that means that we support some initiative in teaching uh, at the university level because we know that um, 
when there is a, uh, sometimes some lake of uh, uh, to to know how to teach a, in at the university level, and we can uh, support uh, some action in in that way. We also uh, very strong uh, initiative with the field officer program. I will detail what means uh, this uh, this field officer program, and of course. We try to support an uh, action workshop initiative in Europe and beyond uh, when we uh, some action uh, are, are made. Well, people propose to the geoscience education some uh, help to organize some uh, very nice uh, geoscience teaching uh, workshop. And so we try to, to support this action. So if I have to speak about the gift, so the main uh, action for the education of uh, the committee of education is our, our annual uh, gift that we that run in during the general assembly. So mainly is something about the 80 teacher. Uh, well, we are expecting uh, uh, 80 teacher from 2023. It's a workshop of two and a half day. And uh, there is a call. Uh, for teacher, for high school teacher, middle school teacher. The call will be in December of this year, and the, call, the teacher ask and register to be selected to participate to this workshop. This workshop this year will be around the Agenda 2030, so uh, the key role of geoscience in, in this uh, global change of sustainable development. Uh, of course, we we invite a lot of lecturers. Sometimes, most of the lecturers are already in the EJU General Assembly, so it's easy to to get this uh, high level uh, lecturer. And we have also poster session with teacher, and we we try also to make a hands on ac session activities for the teacher. So this is our main um, event. And uh, teachers are welcome to 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 answer to, to register to the call uh, to part, to be able to participate to this uh, to this workshop. But we have also we support also other gift, what we call gift on the field. So there is another way to in, to improve his scientific background working on the field. And we have two places with two uh, field school, one in current. Uh, so we've organized by the current reef lab in Patras and the other one in around the Etna volcano. These two schools uh, are organized in very geological, very interesting place. And we invite some teacher, they are selected, and some student too, to uh, participate to this workshop. So of course, there is also a call to select the teacher. Of course, for 2023, the call will be on the EGU website uh, later. Then about the tertiary geoscience education, we, we help in free, in free ways um, the geoscience teaching resource. One is to ask to people to, to produce and after to push online teaching resource for university. So we can help each resource uh, selected uh, by a grant. And after we hope that in a few years, we will have a, a very huge database of teaching resource for university, freely available, of course, uh, and to be downloadable uh, by people and to, to improve the teaching at the university. Of course, there is another Another help is what we call early career scientist support. So this is to support uh, well, a fellowship. And this the fellow will have to work uh, to sensitize and to disseminate uh, geoscience education, um, development, and innovation. And he will have also the opportunity to present the, his work or her work during the General Assembly in 2023. So the call of the website will be very soon in December 2022 to select uh, this early career scientist uh, to, to go ahead with this uh, experience. And the, 
the other one action for the teaching tertiary geoscience education is to help uh, geoscience teaching workshop. This year we have helped one of these. It was in by, uh, hosted by the University of Glasgow. Um, you have a link if you have to to look at the, this uh, uh, this uh, workshop. And we hope that we will be able to help two workshop next year um, in this kind of uh, topic. So of course, a tertiary, uh, a workshop for geoscience teaching. And so we hope that we will have a uh, well, proposal and we, we will be able to select two of these proposals for, for the next year. So look at the, if you're interested to propose workshop, look at the website because around December 2022, we will have a call to, uh, to apply for, to, to propose workshop. I would want uh, before uh, make the conclusion to, to speak about the field officer program. So the idea is to select teacher who will be able in the national and local scale to train other teacher so these teachers were selected, trained, so now they are field officer for EGU Committee of Education, and they have to, to spread uh, a way to, to teach geoscience at school uh, around them, so at the local and regional, maybe national conference, when they have the opportunity to participate to conference, they can propose uh, a session with very low cost materials and very easy to use material to, to promote geoscience at school in European countries. We try to continue this uh, field officer program and uh, if there is some new call and uh, if you are a teacher and interested to become field officer, there is some opportunity to become field officer for your country. Actually, we have 11 field officers, so it's a, a huge number of field officers, and maybe we will increase the number of field officers in the, in the future. So um, all this action, well, we have more action, but I prefer to highlight some of this action. These action are, um, the work of the Committee of Education. You have 15 uh, members of uh, this Committee of Education today. There is one mail, very important. If you have question today, but maybe question in the future, uh, do, do not hesitate to contact education at uh, egu.eu. Thank you very much for your attention. And Simon, you, are, you can continue go ahead with the webinar. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, uh, Jean-Luc, for that presentation. Um, before I move on to any questions, I just want to highlight some of the uh, deadlines that were brought up in the last few talks. So on the 12th of September um, is a deadline for the science policy hiring scheme if you want work experience uh, for a week with an MEP in the European Parliament. On the 15th of September, there's a funding deadline uh, for proposals for conferences and training schools. Um, on the 19th of September is the uh, deadline for session proposals for the EGU 23 General Assembly. And then I believe December there is a host of uh, deadlines for education, which includes funding for uh, teaching workshops for higher education, um, the call for teachers to attend gifts, and also the uh, ECS Education Fellowship, which correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jean-Luc. Um, but yes, thanks to our speakers today for highlighting all those opportunities. Um, as we move on to q and I just wanna quickly ask um, Martin, is there also a deadline for the uh, public engagement grants we can highlight? Um, yeah, so normally that scheme runs um, uh, opening just before the General Assembly with a closing date usually in June. So we've just uh, received a whole load of applications, excellent applications that we're about to uh, approve, the successful ones, and then we're anticipating uh, the same time scale in 2023. So get thinking of ideas for projects. Excellent. So yeah, there's uh, quite a few initiatives that are open called in the summer. 
Um, yeah, so that includes uh, the funding for our science journalism, um, which is monetary support for our science journalists projects. Uh, there's the public engagement grants, uh, Martin mentioned. Um, yeah, so basically throughout the year, there'll be a lot of funding calls. If you want to keep in touch and see what calls are open, you can follow the uh, newsletters, either the um, loop, which is the main one, or the policy newsletter, or follow us on social media where all calls are also highlighted. Uh, moving into more of the questions. Um, this one is asking, is there any initiatives uh, by the EU for the United Nations Decade of Ocean Sciences for Sustainable Development? Um, I think this is in response to a policy, but I think the answer yeah. is, yeah. I, yeah, I think so. I think that's, that's a really great question. Um, so this is sort of something I didn't go into detail about, about how we exactly picked biodiversity as the, the policy priority area for EGU. One of the reasons is that it actually encompasses oceans as well, it encompasses a lot of different EGU divisions. Um, so we want to try and keep it open to as many EGU members as possible while still having a specific topic that we can focus on. Um, and I will say one of the one of the members of the EGU Biodiversity Task Force is, an, is sort of working on ocean science. So we are covering that aspect. And there was this event in Portugal that she went to and she reported back on that to the group. And we also incorporated this into our response um, into the EU nature restoration law as well. So the biodiversity task force included a couple of recommendations in terms of um, restoration in the oceans, which is a focus of this EU nature restoration law. Um, so we are we are trying to focus on these different EU division areas, um, but in terms of the specific um, decade of the oceans. It's not something that we are specifically focusing on, again, just because it would really focus on more um, just one division of the EG. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap into oceans as well, um, but it, it, uh, it is sort of a consideration when we're talking about the different things that we engage with as a union to as how we can represent as many members as possible. Um, so... I will say, if you do have anything you would like to highlight, and I again, I didn't go into this in, in my presentation because we did run out of time or I didn't want to take up too much time. Um, but as the, the EG's policy manager, I do actually publish a lot of initiatives online for our members to look at. So not only do we have the science policy newsletter, which is really a highlights, but we also have an e-policy news page, more generally speaking. We have an external calendar page as well where I post all of these particular events that might be of interest to EGU members um, as sort of a one-stop shop. So if you're interested in learning more about what policy events you can go to or science policy events you can go to, you can go to this external events page. Um, or if you want to know specific information about these news items, or if you would like to share a news item that you think is relevant to your division or your community that is policy relevant, you can also let me know. Um, my email is policy at egu.eu. You can always email me, at me on Twitter, um, and I will actually look at these and, and see if we can also include them in our external events page or on our EU policy news page. So, great question. Thanks. Thanks, Chloe. Uh, just a quick follow-up. Uh, will the task force be opening up for new members at all, or will people wanting to be engaged have to wait for the next uh, task yeah. force? So this is a discussion that we will be having actually towards the end of the year. Again, another thing I didn't mention is that EGU will be hosting an event in the parliament in November. So this event will be focusing on biodiversity and on the EU nature restoration law. Um, and following this event, we'll then have a discussion about what areas of expertise we are missing within the group. So obviously we have eight members and all eight members come from very different disciplines which is great because we have that diversity, but biodiversity is a huge, huge topic and we can always use a more diverse group of people. So we'll be having that discussion within the task force about whether we'd like to include a couple more members. And if this happens, it will be probably opened during the EGU General Assembly next year, so over April. Um, so do keep an eye out in April next year. Thanks, Chloe. Um, for the next question, I think uh, might be geared more to Sean Luke. Um, it's also a nice little review at the same time. Uh, the questioner asks or says, I attended the recent field officer training in Barcelona and it was brilliant. One of the best parts was meeting other geoscience teachers in other countries and sharing ideas. And the question is, 
which other countries do you plan to join into the field officer scheme? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, well, as I said, we have already 11 field officers. So that's in 11 countries in Europe. Of course, we begin, the first step was uh, to begin with uh, country like uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, France. Well, it's not a surprise because we have a geoscience teacher in, the, in that country with a geoscience curriculum at school. So it was easier to, to begin with, uh, with this country. Now we, we increase the number with uh, some other countries. Uh, have we planned to increase more? Well, the, the first step will be to make first an evaluation of a program because we run the program uh, since three, four years, three years now. So uh, we would prefer maybe to, to make a little stop to see uh, if the program is running well. We think so, but we have, we have to make a, a real evaluation of, of that program. And then uh, the idea is to, well, to share with more country in Europe and but of course, in some countries, we have only geography teacher or physics teacher, and sometimes it's, there is no. So actually, we have the plan is to join and to keep in touch with uh, national association of teacher, so or association of geology to well to to link the field officer with uh, the, this uh, this kind of association at the national level, but also. To, to have um, a large team of uh, national association, it will be nice for us to share, to share and to spread information. And also when we will want to increase the, the number of field officers, we will be in touch with a lot of teachers association and it will be easier to increase the number. Mainly in, in, pay, in country where we are, no field officer like in Scandinavia or in the east part of Europe. So we, we will try to do this, but first we prefer to make a, this year an evaluation of a program be, before going ahead. But the idea to share with more and more country in Europe and maybe beyond, uh, it is of course a, a, a good, uh, a good position for, for everybody. I hope I answer the question to, to Peter. Thank you, Jean Louis. Yes, yeah, so uh, I think we had seven new field officers join us uh, this year from yeah. Albania and the UK and Greece and Germany and Turkey um, and Estonia as well. Estonia, Estonia. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so Romania, I think Romania, yeah. Yeah, and Romania, yes, of course. So um so I, I think basically there's gonna be a review of the field officer program and then um we'll look to expand into other countries after that yes um yes uh next question i have uh is there an age limitation i think I'm not sure what this is exactly in response to um it might have been to the pairing scheme potentially Maybe. yeah, yeah. i i can i can say that's open to all career career stages um, we're looking for people who are motivated. So part of part of your motivation letter should be about why you are interested in particular um, working with Norbert Linz, how your area of expertise relates to his particular needs or the needs of his team, um, your previous experience in either policy or outreach, um, and just your general experience as well. So that's sort of the, uh, the criteria that we'll be looking at. And I should also say the pairing scheme is completely funded by the EGU. So we will help um, fund your, well, we will pay for your transportation to Brussels and your accommodation while you're there as well. Excellent. Just, uh, just in case that the age limit was asking about potential audiences that you might want to engage with um, through some of the EGU opportunities, there is no real age limit. Obviously, the teacher scientist pairing scheme is for school schools but uh so there will be school age children but that can be at, at different levels depending on how the pairing works and when it comes to things like the public engagement grants we actually encourage people to to come up with projects for very diverse audiences not just thinking about schools or not just thinking about general public but you know we've had projects that have gone into prisons we've had 
projects that engage with artistic audiences or uh, people with disabilities. Um, so really thinking about all of the different ways that, um, you know, different ways that you can section off the public um, and coming up with innovative ways uh, of making your science uh, engaging for these people. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, so I think in quick summary, um, as long as you're an early career scientist, onwards, you can apply for any of these um, and for the outreach uh, projects. They can be targeted at any audience you would like. So there's a lot of freedom there. Um, I think it's close to wrapping up the webinar. Um, just one final question on how I can get involved more in EG more generally. I guess that means more perhaps working with working groups or committees. Um, let's see, is there anyone who can talk on that perhaps? I guess the, um, Helen, would you like to speak on that at all? Yeah, sure. I, I, I think in terms of how people can get more involved, um, there are a whole range of things that EGU offers to our members, as we've heard about already from the speakers. But also, I think if people want to uh, join EGU committees um, or generally just volunteer their time. We regularly have calls for volunteers for people to join our committees. So if you look out for those calls, um, if you're a younger person, as Chloe's mentioned already, there are opportunities and, and Martin mentioned, there are opportunities um, through um, pairing schemes, etc. But I, I think it's also worth saying that many of our events are open to everyone. Um, the only caveat to that is if you are if you are considered a minor, so under 18, you would need to have a um, an adult um, who would um, support you and accompany you. But EGU is open to everybody. Um, but obviously, we do have a duty of care. And for that reason, if, if you are under 18, then we would ask you to nominate an adult who would be responsible for your involvement. But I think if you want to volunteer your time, there are loads of calls and opportunities that that go out through the year. Um, so look out for those um, because we are really keen to engage with a, as diverse a group of people as possible. Because as I mentioned in my introduction, EGU is driven by our volunteers and we heavily rely on our volunteers. And so having as a uh, wider range of people involved as possible is a benefit to EGU as a whole. And so we welcome people to, to, to actually engage with us at all levels. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, I'd like to just quickly highlight a couple of other ways we get involved. Um, in terms of the General Assembly, um, we have paid communication interns. Um, those, those calls are opened a few months before the General Assembly. So if you want to get some insight um, into behind the scenes and how we run such a large conference, uh, keep an eye out for that. Again, they're paid internship positions. Um, and also like if you're an early career scientist as well, there are ECS representatives. If you want to get involved more with the EGU that way, you can contact representative and see if we can join one of their teams, which usually involve everything from hosting workshops to um, running social media or producing scientific articles. Um, with that, I think the webinar is now at its end. I'd like to thank um, all our speakers for attending today, uh, all our attendees for coming through and listening to us. And yes, have a nice day, otherwise. Thank you. Bye bye.